All right, so we are going to explore, hopefully, creative ways to find new online prospects. So all of you who have businesses or work at businesses, you have your normal methods for finding people. We're going to explore some other ways you can do that, that you can leverage both for your SEO, your PPC, or really any type of marketing you're doing. So when we get creative, oftentimes when we're doing keyword research, where we start and say, okay, what, what are the words we need to use on our website so we're gonna rank number one in Google? And you can get stuck in the same keyword research rut, which is, you know, you, you're at your company, you have your products and services, you have the language that you use internally to describe what you do, and you're used to talking about your company in a certain way. Um, but before you know it, you start going around in circles. You're, you, you keep fishing in the same pond and there's no more fish there anymore. You need to go find a new place to look. So where do we find these untapped opportunities? Now, there's lots of great research out there about search engine marketing. And of course, when we talk about search engine marketing, we're really all sitting at the poker table with Google, right? And we don't know what cards Google holds. I mean, they tell us there's these certain ranking factors, but which ones are more important, and what's the weight, and what do we do about it? You know, so you, know, you can apply you know, latent semantic analysis, natural language processing, you know, what's this rank brain thing coming out? But the reality is it's now Monday, it's 9.37 a.m., you're at your desk, and you're like, how am I gonna get more traffic to my site? And, you know, these, these approaches are good from a scientific perspective, but we need to have practical ways that we can all use in our business. So the good news is, the answer, it's right in your pocket. And when I say pocket, I'm referring to the problem, the opportunity, the question, or the thought that arises in the minds of the people that you're trying to reach, the human beings. Now it's interesting, somebody asked me the other day, you know, do you, what do you think feels the difference between B2B marketing and B2C marketing? And I told him, you know, at the end of the day, I really don't think there's a difference because we're marketing to human beings. And human beings have problems and there's things they want to do and there's thoughts they have and there's questions that arise. And these human beings sometimes have these problems and questions at work and sometimes at home, depending on what they're looking for. You know, somebody once said to have a successful business, it's good to be the aspirin, not the vitamin. Right? Because, I mean, the vitamin's great, you take it, it makes you feel better, yeah, I know I should take it, but when you're in pain, you're like, where's the aspirin? I gotta get an aspirin. I'm gonna go to the store and get some aspirin. And your product or service may be the aspirin to somebody's problem or even question. And if you can do that, you're way down the road in making a sale. So, when you're having your team meeting and you're brainstorming and you're whiteboarding and you're stickying, Keep in mind, the problems, opportunities, questions, and thoughts are the people that you're trying to reach. So one place that a lot of people start with keyword research is in Google Keyword Planner, which it's, it's called Keyword Planner, they're giving you keyword research, it's free, and it's, it's, if you're running AdWords, they're directing you to there to do your keyword research. And you know it's a good tool, but a couple of things. First of all, unless you're like a huge, huge advertiser or have some kind of back-end API access, they're gonna give you very rounded up information in very big bands. So if you're looking at uh, the difference between keyword volume and it's not a big difference, it's all gonna be lumped together. The second thing is, Keyword Planner is for AdWords, which is paid search. So there are terms that people bid on in the paid search world that they don't in the organic search. So if you're really doing search for your site organically, it's a, different, it's a different collection of words, possibly. So you're not really getting like the full picture of all the data. So it's an interesting question, like how many brand new searches are there every day? Do you ever wonder that? You know, you type in your question, you're like, how many other people ask this question? So there's, there's 3.3 billion total searches done every day, just of all types. And out of those, 15% of those have never been seen before by Google every day. Which means that you're talking about every single day, there's half a billion new searches that people concoct from their problems and questions and so forth. Now, so Keyword Planner is never gonna surface these ideas because it's never seen them before. So the good news is the opportunity is out there. You really just have to know where to look. So that's what we're going to explore, some interesting places to look for ideas where your people are.
So we're gonna, we want to see how can we generate new seed ideas along the way. So how many people here have ever heard of ZMOT? One, two, three, all right, a couple. All right, so this stands for Zero Moment of Truth. This is a concept that Google put out there, and if you have some time, you know, go look it up. Google has some interesting research on this. This originally started with Procter & Gamble, called um, the first moment of truth, and here's how it works. So Procter & Gamble, you know, biggest consumer products, good company in the world, and they realized, you know, their battlefield is the supermarket aisle, this. Right, you know, you're, you're going there to buy cereal and you have this incredible selection. So this is like the Google search results page, you know, page, link after link, you know, you put in your query, like wh which one of these is gonna, is gonna solve my problem? You know, so you're going in there and you're walking down the aisle and this is what they call the first moment of truth because you're, you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, I want this one or that one. And it was probably driven by like some advertising or like whatever, you know, your kid's giving you a hard time, I wanna buy this one. Um, so you buy, you take it home, and then you eat the cereal. And that's the second moment of truth, when you actually experience the product, and now you make a decision when you go back to the store, are you going back here? So Google said there's a, there's a moment before that. First, there is, there is the stimulus. So like something happens in your world, right? And then because something happened, now you have you formulated a problem or a question. And these days, oh my God, like what else do you do? Like, you don't go to the library. <laughs> you probably don't even ask somebody because they'll give you some snarky, oh, let me Google that for you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You're just expected to go to Google. So you go to Google and you type in your, your search and then you hope for the best. Now, Google's gotten pretty darn good. I don't know if any of you remember the early days, you know, even before Google, you had to go through pages and pages and pages. Your answer is probably in the top three in Google. Um, and then you click on the link and you arrive at some website and that's your second moment of truth. Then you decide, gee, am, ha am I happy I'm here or am I not happy I'm here? So when we're, when we're talking about you know, winning the, the game of search, you know, we're thinking this, but really it begins there or even before there. And if we can start to get a handle of what's happening there, and anticipate what people are typing in in the first moment of truth, then they'll be a lot happier to find your website in the second moment of truth, because they're like, aha, these people are gonna be the answer to my problem. They're my aspirin. So if we take these new seed ideas and then map them out to the pocket, problems, opportunities, questions, and thoughts, we can start to analyze this. Now there's tools like SEMrush and there's other fine tools as well that'll help you balance the volume and the viability, right? Because you're looking for opportunities where lots of people are searching, but there isn't a whole lot of, comp the competition for it isn't all that strong. So there's tools out there, you can, you can take it to that next level and really get advanced with what you're doing. So we're gonna walk through some examples using the model of Oh, like we own a piano store, right? It's a brick and mortar store, but we have a website. You know, it's a high ticket purchase. It's not a kind of a click and buy opportunity. We have to find our, our prospects out there. By the way, I picked this because I play piano and I had to pick an example, so that's why we're doing this. Okay, so online communities are a great place to find top of the funnel um, pro uh, ideas. So you, you all know what I mean when I'm talking about the funnel, right? You know, it's it's kind of a get their attention, awareness, kind of nurturing, you know, consideration, and then decision, buying, and so forth. Um, you know, those of you that work um, at marketing agencies or in marketing departments, you know, it's all, you know, you're always hearing about this, what's my ROI, you know? You know, did people buy when they clicked on my link? You know, well, it doesn't always start there. Sometimes we have to start them up here. So how do we fill the funnel? So Wikipedia is a great place to start. So we type in our keyword, our head term, piano, and we come up with a great page, which itself is filled with a lot of great keywords. So what's relevant about this is, you know, think about how this page comes to be. This is crowdsourced. These are all the people in the world that have an interest in piano, and they are writing words that are kind of related, it's kind of the semantic universe of this, which means if you sell pianos, the, this, this vocabulary is in the language of the people that you're trying to reach. Now, there might be things here that you don't sell per se, but it's of interest to your audience. And remember, when you talk about, especially the organic search marketing, you can't go and put the question in their mind. 
they come up with their own question of what's of interest to them. Hopefully you can get their attention with something of value and then pivot them to at least awareness of who and what you are. So that's a big part of the game. So for example, I'm working with a, a company. They sell a CRM software for a particular type of industry. And the thing is nobody in, in the industry looks for CRM related to that industry because it's a new thing. So we have to find other areas where people are already interested. So in Wikipedia, there's also C also with a lot of other great keywords. And these are great you know, starter seed ideas. Um, Quera is an excellent site. I mean, it's questions and answers. So we typed in piano. We get the questions people are asking, uh, the related topics. It's kind of like the Google auto suggest. So Quera is, we, we're leveraging the database and the intelligence in Quera to automatically get ideas sorted, sorted by relevance already of areas where, where, we, where we need to focus on. So, you know, we may sell pianos, but maybe people are searching for things related to learning piano because that's what's triggering them. And then the questions, you know, problem. Should I quit playing piano and come back later? You know, opportunity. I'd like to play the synthesizer in a band. You know, question. Is it okay to learn and practice with digital and not an upright grand piano? So maybe you don't even sell digital pianos, but gosh, that would be a great piece of content. Like what are the pros and cons of starting on digital versus um, an acoustic piano? So again, just like Google with AutoSuggest, you can start typing in your query and you will get recommended questions. So, so you're really starting to get some, some ideas of what's on people's mind. Now, you create content that speaks to this. Now your website becomes a magnet for the interest that already exists. So customer reviews are an outstanding source. It's like your own free online focus group and also competitive analysis. So I searched for digital piano reviews and I wound up with piano keyboard review site. And just by looking at the user reviews, what you're doing is you're really uh, eavesdropping in on people speaking in their own voice using the words that they use and choose to describe what's of interest to them and in their, in their questions. And you read enough of these and you, themes start to emerge. So for this one, for example, they kept talking about the keyboard action, the feel of a grand, the feel of the keys. And this is important because there's something called the hummingbird update in Google, which means that you don't have to put the same keyword in over and over and over and over again. Google understands that, for example, these five bullet points all are referring to the same thing. So what you're getting is five different ways to very naturally incorporate a singular idea into your content. Now Google can look at this content that you've created and say, ah, this is a page that's all about keyboard action. And you can do it in a way that's not spammy to Google, it's not spammy to the user, and you're writing very naturally. And these ideas you're getting where? From the people you're trying to reach. So discussion forums are still a thing, depending on what industry you're in. So there, I found this one, pianoworld.com, and just in the directory down the left, there are a lot of great starter ideas. And again, when I say starter ideas, obviously we're talking about content. So maybe your, your job is to do SEO, but maybe your job is to do content marketing, or you're a writer for the website. So you, you still want to create content that's going to be like this vibrational match for what your audience is looking for. So here we have somebody already did the work, a site dedicated towards it. They've already categorized it for you. Uh, boardreader.com is a site that you can search across multiple discussion boards at once. It could be a useful tool, again, depending on the industry that you're in. So from here, we get some ideas that we pull right from there, um, including you know, buying a piano for a son or daughter. No, I know nothing about pianos. Every one of these could be a great article on your site. Again, it doesn't have to be directly related to your product, but it's of interest to your audience, and you've got to get them there first. So Twitter's a useful tool, especially to tap into the current zeitgeist, you know, what people are talking about right now. So we typed in piano, and of course, you know, we get the, the suggested responses. Um, but we also tapped into this. So what some cities around the country are doing, they're, they're getting old, upright pianos. They're getting artists 
uh, commissioned to decorate them, and they just put them around town. And so what happens? People who play, they sit down, they play, it creates great moments, it's a little joy in the day, uh, social media gets generated. So this is happening all over the country, and it's a trend that you know, people are interested in. So if you created content around this, for example, you can list, you know, here's 10 cities that are doing, you know, piano in the park programs. And then you can name check them and link to their pages and link to their social media. And then do a little outreach and say, hey, Brooklyn Bridge Park social media manager, guess what? We just wrote an article and, and talked all about you. Isn't that cool? Which means now they're going to retweet and they're going to share. And then you get some, you know, kind of a base level influencer marketing happening here and some social activity. So conferences and events like this are a great source for ideas. Um, so I typed in piano conference and a lot of um, education conferences came up. And usually these days, so the, the program itself is online. And what's great about the program is, you know, it's a collection of speakers who are looking to present concepts that are relevant now, that are of interest to people. So the language that's used is very interesting. Um, obviously this is targeting piano teachers who, if we had our piano store, would definitely be part of our audience. And we're getting concepts of notation tools, sight reading tools, piano studio, interactive music apps. Again, you're a piano store, maybe you don't sell music apps, but your audience is interested in them. You can talk about them and then tie and pivot back to, to what you do. So your own website is actually a great source for keyword ideas. So how many people here have um, internal search on their website? Okay, about a third. It's, if you don't have it and, and you, it's a WordPress site, it's like super simple to activate. Um, interestingly enough, only about 7% of companies feel that they actually leverage this information. Usually it's there just kind of as a perfunctory, well, let's like give them like a way to search the site if they can't find what they're looking for. So if, if you have site search and you're not doing this already, definitely like tomorrow, go into Google Analytics and go to the, the view settings and turn on site search tracking. If it's a WordPress site, you just put in an, an S for the query parameter. And um, I always check the box to strip the query parameters out of the URL so it doesn't clutter up your, your page results. It all, it all rolls up into one page. And now you can see what people are typing in, which is a really useful thing because they're telling you exactly what they're interested in, um, which, is, is kind of a good and bad of that. So the good news is they were really glad they found your site. So glad that they were willing to like just put something in your search box, let alone Google, because they thought, you know what, this site looks like it might have what I'm looking for. Um, they definitely want to know more, and the strong user intent, and they have some hope that they're going to find it on your site as opposed to going back to Google. Now, the other thing to consider, the flip side of that coin, is that maybe they're using your search because your site stinks and they're confused and they don't understand how you name things and the menu structure. And um, by the way, has anybody ever seen this diagram before? So this is the college campus. So the, the, the design is the paved sidewalk. The user experience is what people actually do. So you, know, you, you really want to take a look at your site and it's like, why do people keep searching for things when we have it like right there on the site? Because this is your menu structure and they're not, they find this to be faster and more useful. So when you, when you look at this data, you know, when you open up Google Analytics, it's going to, by default, give you like one week or one month. You want to go back like a number of months, which means you have to be collecting the data you know, for that period of time. It doesn't go back. And you start to look for themes. Like, like there's going to be all these variations, right? Because it's just human beings typing stuff into the form. But you'll definitely see themes emerge, um, which will help your, first of all, the usability of your site. But secondly, you'll see what's, what's really hot in people's minds. Um, and then you can find the searches that are higher value. And then, because it's in Google Analytics, you can segment it. You can say, just show me the site search activity from people coming from paid search, or just from people coming from um, referral, or search, or whatever. And then you'll definitely get some insights from there. So pretty much every website has got the contact form, right? Right, name, email, phone, right? This is the big win, what we're hoping for. 
Um, and then there's always a message box at the bottom. Now, that content usually goes directly to, you know, where like customer service or like, you know, whoever's supposed to fulfill this or just maybe it goes into outer space like it seems to happen every time I fill one of these forms out, like <laughs> you never hear from them again. Um, but there's words in there, words used by people who had problems and opportunities and questions and thoughts. And the thing is, this information is going to like tech support and customer service, but guess who could benefit from it? The marketing department. So if you're in marketing or if you're all one of the same, you know, ask for this data, look at it. You know, look, it's a bit of a fishing expedition. You don't know what you're going to find, but you may find some interesting things. You may find things like like, I'm looking for this information and you already had it on your website, you know, so you can address the usability. Or you see people keep asking about this one question over and over again. Well, hey, let's write some content on it, right? Let's write a nice article with some, with some links and, and some images and, and put it out there and share it on social and put it on the email because we have some confidence that people are genuinely interested in this. So you can take specific pages of either your site or if you use a, a tool like SEMrush, you can actually put in a competitor's site. So here I dropped in Yamaha's page for upright pianos and I was able to get the keywords that Yamaha is attracting on this page in Google. So it's a kind of, now you have to use a tool to do something like this, but it is possible to reverse engineer your competition. So especially if you're just getting started or is it somebody in your space that's doing really well, um, and also you, you're Googling what seems to be popular terms and they keep coming up. You see their, their page is always coming up near the top. You can say, all right, what are the other words that this page is getting traffic for? Take a look at it and say, okay, what do we need to do you know, to build out com content to address this? All right, so we talked a lot about organic search. So I wanna talk a little bit about um, what if you're doing PPC that instead of directing to like the buy now page, we're taking them to a content page. So it's a lot of the same principles that we'll tap in. So, you know, again, usually with PPC is like, all right, I spent a dollar, I wanna make $2 all day long. You know, but sometimes that's really not ever gonna happen depending on the type of business you're in. So for example, if you have a retail store, you wanna drive traffic, foot traffic into the store. So they're never gonna click a buy button right online. Um, no, no, nobody goes to a website and just says buy now for, for their Steinway, at least not usually. Um, also, maybe you're a B2B company and maybe it's not really an e-commerce site. It's a type of site where you, know, you, you have the different tiers and there's like, you know, call now for pricing. So you just wanna get them there. Now, you know, the organic search game can be tough. Depends on who and what you're up against and what the competition is. But with paid search, if you're willing to invest some budget, you can at least get people to your site. Well, what's the value of that? Well, we build brand awareness. We can drop a first party cookie. Now we can retarget them on all the social networks, which, which, which now includes AdWords, Fa well, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can retarget in Quera, on Twitter. So once they touch your site once, you can haunt them for a little bit. Um, maybe you offer some quality content because you, you were doing your homework with problems and opportunities. They, they gave you up your email. Now you can send them an email nurture sequence. So you got them to your site. That was the value of it. You started the conversation. So I think, well, how can we develop a game plan for PPC to content as opposed to PPC to a buy now landing page? So what that means is now we're trying to identify not so much like, like buying intent keywords, but higher funnel intent. And we want to create content that's going to ultimately pay off for us. Um, now the good news is, you know, when you have a really competitive organic search results, the ads can ensure that you're cutting through and getting through to the top. Um, so first, when you set up your attribution in, in Google Analytics, don't just think, um, first touch, you know, you want to think maybe first touch and last touch or a, a linear or a time decay or something that lets that PPC ad, the fact that the PPC ad got the person to your site count something towards the win, even though it's not the ultimate win. So going back here, you know, looking at the, the keyboard action interest we identified. Um, I did a search, digital piano best keyboard action, and this is the result. So we're gonna take a little journey through this result. Um, first, 
Google's auto suggest. So interestingly, um, and we're going to identify things as we go through this, you know, um, top, mid, and bottom funnel. Google gave us a range of options that are really, it's a mix from different aspects of the funnel, right? Um, you know, scaled hammer action versus weighted keys. They're, they're pretty much at the top. You know, the most realistic digital piano feel. Well, maybe that's somebody already landed on. They're going to get a digital piano. They want to know which one. Korg SP170S. Okay, that's bottom funnel. You know, they're in, that's, a, that's a buying mode. You know, tri sensor scaled hammer action. They, they're, they're pretty well landed at what they want. They're like, just get me to that. Um, also, interestingly, they gave me an alternate, like one of those, did you mean? So I searched for digital piano best keyboard action, which I considered a top funnel, but it also suggested digital piano keyboard action, which is more like, well, I'm not looking for the best yet, just tell me about it. Um, and then we got the, the PLAs, the product listing ads, which are total bottom funnel. And then we got this, um, this, this featured snippet here, which is really interesting. Um, so it, it took the content from the page, organized it really nicely. We even got the, this, this logo in here, and it's just this great mid-funnel content. So by the way, this is the page. That's the destination page. And you know, when you're creating content, if you can, you know, somebody once said, if you can be the best thing on the web about that specific thing, then you're going to win the search results. And they put a lot of time and effort into this. So this is a combination of some top funnel content and some bottom funnel, here's some products. And, and by the way, up, if, you, if you recognize this, that's, that's where Google got this from. And you know, there wasn't anything fancy done here. This is just um, straight up table coding. We're not even talking like div columns and all you know, the responsive you know, CSS stuff. It's just a straight up table, but Google understood it and they took all of these headings and they were able to parse it down to just the ones that related to questions about keyboard action. It's pretty darn smart. Right, because that's, that's what Google came up with. Model keys and action out of photo model keys, action, weight, price, rating. So you can do this on your site too. If you have information that can be organized, remember Google's mission is not just to like, you know, have answers to questions. They want to organize the world's information. They love doing this when they have the opportunity. You just have to make it easy for them. So there's a lot of great information online on how to take information you have and make it easier for Google to pull it out and feature it on the site. Now at first when this happened, marketers panicked. They're like, oh man, I just want to get them to my site. And Google's just giving them the answer. Like, then, then they're never going to come to my site. What people found, though, is that when you get this, it's like getting Google's seal of approval. Google's like, this site is so good, we're going to give you a piece of it right here. And of course, it's never everything you need. You want to know more. You're like, well, okay, this is good. Well, where's the rest of it? So you click and you go through. So anytime you can get this, you go get it, because it's awesome. So more content, basics of hammer action, some bottom funnel ads. Um, some, some analysis of different kinds, how to compare keyboard actions, uh, related articles, um, what's the best digital piano that are more bottom funnel, like what's the what's best one under a thousand, um, a whole buying guide. So they really did their homework on this. Now it could be argued, well this could have been like four different web pages, but Google certainly rewarded it for sure. So I'm just saying if you're investing money in driving traffic to your site, for something that's content, I mean, that's, that's some content there. Now, it doesn't have to be all of that, but you know, give people something they're really happy to have found and, and want to share. So if we break down the SERPs, we see that Google itself gave us a mix of informational sites, there's some affiliate sites, there's some direct e-commerce sites, but yet there was only one ad on this page a bottom funnel ad to buy digital pianos. And remember, we started, we're not looking for digital pianos. We're just asking about the keyboard action. That, that's where we are. We're top funnel, and all the ads that I'm seeing are bottom funnel. It's like, I, I'm not there yet. But imagine if you were there. Imagine if you were there, and you had an ad that actually answered the question that the person had. That would be of a lot more interest to them and a lot more relevant. 
So the question is, what would it take to get a decent position? Because, well, let's see, well, this, this ad is right down there. What if you can get up here? So the same principles apply um, for, for content, whether you're working on or, or organic or paid. Um, you want it to be generally helpful, you know, a nice meaty content, you know, good uh, document structure with titles and subheads and images and cross links and so forth. You know, basically all the things that would make the mark for a good organic site. And also makes these folks happy. You know, be their, be their aspirin. You know, answer their question, solve their problem. So when we go back to this page, let's take a little inventory of the ads that came up for digital piano keyboard action. We got bottom funnel, buyer pianos, eh, nope. Um, hybrid and digital piano sale, also bottom funnel. PLAs, bottom funnel. We get some weird um, dynamic keyword insertion ad. Digital piano hammer action, Amazon.com affiliate site. Yeah, right. <laughs> so that's not going anywhere. Um, so just as kind of a thought experiment, well, what if we took what we learned in the first half of what we talked about, what we learned from those communities, from Wikipedia, from the customer review sites, from the discussion forums, the language that people are using, the problems they're formulating, what the questions they're asking in Quira, and we use that information to write our PPC ads. So digital piano keyboard actions, which are the most realistic? Um, which simulate real piano keys. Digital piano action primer, how do they work? Which have the most realistic feel? They're not all the same, learn more here. It's always good to have a call to action. Um, and so some of this language I got directly from actual users, and you can do the same thing. So now you can take the keyword research and this problem opportunity question thought research you're using, and not only use it to decide what content to create, what that content should look like, but how to write the ads that are going to attract these people, because now you are speaking in their language at the point of their stimulus and thought before they get to their first moment of truth of hitting the search page. So what does this all add up to? Well, if you were to go to AdWords and buy the, the keyword term digital piano, it's $1.22 per click, but if you buy Best action digital piano, it's only 26 cents, and best digital piano action was 80 cents. So that's a significant discount. Now, admittedly, you know, these folks are not as bottom funnel maybe as digital piano, but you also paid a lot less. You got them to your site, and you had the opportunity to build a conversation. Again, not necessarily an impulse purchase, so maybe that's okay. But we have to take the interest they already have and then pivot them. We'll find more people that way. That's why it's a funnel, right? It's bigger at the top. So to do keyword research, there's a lot of great free tools out there. So in addition to Keyword Planner, um, this is an awesome site, answerthepublic.com. And what it does is it takes um, the content that the Google auto suggests and automatically turns them into questions and then runs them through again. So first, the site's from the UK, so when you go there, the first thing you should do, unless you're addressing the UK, is go to the country field and set it to US. Then you type in your terms, so I typed in pianos, and here's what we get, all these questions. Why do pianos have pedals? How do pianos work? Which upright pianos are the best? Are pianos good investments? Any one of these would be an awesome article to have on your website. You know, a lot of times businesses say, oh yeah, I know we're supposed to create content, we're supposed to populate our blog and do content marketing, and this is how we're gonna get people to our site because they're gonna find us in Google, but we don't know what to write about. And they wind up just kind of writing about themselves and their products and blah, blah, blah. You know, answer some real questions that are out there that are relevant to, your, to what you do. Um, they'll turn them into prepositions. You know, what happens if you keep pianos near radiators? Um, uh, what are the pianos to avoid? So this is um, a project that comes out of Princeton University that um, it doesn't go by keyword research, it goes more by just the semantic relationship of words. So this is a great way to kind of get some starter seed ideas. So you type in words and it creates these cool diagrams and so forth and um, it's just something that, that you put up and it just might spark some ideas. 
So infinite suggests also free. Um, you know, if you ever gone into Google and you, you typed in, you know, your keyword and then Google gives you a couple of ideas, you're like, oh wow, this is great. Google is telling me like what else I should be like targeting keyword wise. And then you, then you start thinking like, oh my God, do I have to do this for all my keywords? You know, this is going to be like really tedious. This automates that. So you put in your starting keyword, digital piano, and I got digital piano for beginners, digital piano keyboard, and so forth. And you're not getting like a lot of other like metadata around this, but you're getting an idea, and then you can filter them and save them and export them into like a spreadsheet and save it, and um, it, it's handy, again, and it's free. So before there was SEM Rush, there was something called SEO Quake. And SEO Quake is a free browser plugin for both Chrome and Firefox. And it does a lot of really cool stuff. So you just go to seoquake.com and install it. And then you can see it adds all this other information. So you get all this background information on, on all the results that come up in search. And then if you click on a page, you'll see down on the left um, detailed information about that page. And you can even click through and find out um, you know, when's the last time it was updated, how many inbound links do they have, you know, the advertising, what's the rank of it, what's the traffic to this page. Um, again, it gives you some ideas, some starting points. It'll even do an SEO audit on a, on a given page, tell you what's, what's working, what's not, you know, how long is the characters. You know, it's, it's a great way to do a quick check on your own site. So, at the end of the day, when, when you're trying to reach more of your audience, you know, don't get stuck in the same research rut of looking in the same places as usual. Keep in mind the problems, the opportunities, the questions, and the thoughts of your audience, the people you're trying to reach. And when you're brainstorming, you know, look in other places. Look at places where your people are hanging out, the online communities, your own website. Look at competitor websites, and also check out a lot of these great free keyword research tools that are out there. And, and remember, before they even hit Google, something happened, they had a thought, and now, now they get to Google. And the further this direction you can understand, the better you're going to be in, a line, in alignment, so when they finally get to your website, they're going to be really happy they got there. Um, again, consider using tools to, if you want to take it to the next level, get more sophisticated, understand well, which of these keywords are getting more search volume, which of these keywords are a game that I could win because it isn't quite as competitive as some other ones. And take this knowledge, and not only for your content creation and your organic search strategies, but also take it into your paid search side, especially to use it for writing the ad copy so that it all lines up. Uh, what their question is, what the ad says, and then the page that answers the question in the end. And then if you really want to take this to another level, you can use a power tool like SAM Rush, and again, there's a lot of other fine tools as well, um, where you can analyze this and get data and, and understand what's going on not only for you, but your competition. So um, I'm no longer at SAM Rush, but I talked to the good folks there, and we got a, a special code so that you can get two weeks free of the Guru level account, uh, which is worth about $100, and just go to bit.ly slash TMC dash SAM Rush, why don't you take a picture of that? And when you get it, I mean, look, this, this is a Lamborghini. There's a lot going on there. Don't be intimidated. You know, go through the tutorials. There's lots of great videos. And also, there is a US-based support team, great group of people. I know them all personally. You call up and say, I just got SEM Rush. I don't know what I'm doing with this. Like, where do I even start? They will give you like a walkthrough and answer questions, and they'll do screen share. I mean, they're really dedicated to helping you succeed with your marketing by using this. Um, so look, if, if all you do is hop on for two weeks and squeeze out of it as much as you can, you know, go for it. You know, and if it looks like it's helping you and you want to continue, you know, they can help you with that as well. So remember, no matter what you're doing, the best ideas are really right in your own pocket. All right. <laughs>